Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Raincross Farms Makery. I'm Robin. Behind the camera, behind the computer is my husband, Bill. We're coming to you from just outside of Lewiston, Idaho, and we have a fun craft tonight. We are joining in and hosting this segment of Craft Round the Clock, and this is their Scrap Wood Week. So we are going to be doing a little project using some of uh, scrap wood, not completely from the scrap pile, but not your ordinary lumber that you'd use. So we are so happy that you're here. If there's a red box right up here that says live, you're watching us live. If that's not there, you're watching the replay. We love having you whenever you watch. If you are watching the replay, comment hashtag replay so we know when you watched it. And everyone else, please jump on, say hello if you're new. Uh, please let us know where you're watching from. Let us know you're new. And we would just like to welcome everybody. We hope you will tune in for a couple of minutes and see what we're doing. If you are, if you're a veteran of Facebook Lives, you know the drill. We would love it if you would like or love our page, follow our page, share or sprinkle our page to, to, craft groups you belong to, to people that you know might be interested in watching this, and we should get started. So just, I'm going to take just a moment to pull up the live on my phone. So it's right in front of me. What am I wearing? There I am. Okay, hello. So hop on, say hello. What is this? Thursday, Thursday evening. How has your week gone? Are, do you have weekend plans? Let me know. Okay, the scrap wood that we're gonna use tonight. Well, first of all, we are going to make a planter box for an herb garden. So I, I kind of saw this idea somewhere else and I'm kind of adapting it a little bit to make it my own. So sometimes you can go to those craft stores and you can get a pre-made box and they can be a little pricey. So we are going to kind of make ourselves a budget box using scrap wood. The scrap wood we're going to use are paint stir sticks. So these are, these are ones that I got at Home Depot. So these are the five, the well, they're called 21 inch ruler sticks, but I call them the five gallon paint stir sticks. So they are, there's three in a pack. They're like a dollar. They used to be a dollar. Now they're probably a dollar and a quarter, dollar fifty. So let's see. I see people watching, but nobody's saying hello except Mr. Bill. So say hello. I feel, I feel so alone out here. Hop on, say hi. Okay, so I ended up getting, I used three packages of these, and then I just got a cardboard box. So, hi Sharon, welcome. Sharon, are you the one that had that had the, the real excitement on your live on Monday? Was that you? Oh my goodness, I said a prayer for you. If that was you, I said a prayer for you. It sounds like everything has kind of calmed down, but... Oh my goodness, everyone's worst nightmare. Anyway, we're going to take this box and we're going to actually line it with these paint sticks. Okay, This is, because I'm going to be using canning jars for my herbs, I just used, let me show you, I used the box that the canning jars came in. And of course this holds 12. I only want it to hold four. So I just kind of cut this down and folded it up and kind of came up with this, this little shape right here. And so I'm going to, I'm going to take just a second and glue it. And I'm just going to do some hot glue and pop that together. Oh, good. Yes. I, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if you want to share. Thank you for sprinkling. Well, I, I am so thankful everything turned out okay. And 
and that's all in the past. Okay, let me let me glue up this end, and then I'll tell you what we're gonna do with our scrap wood sticks. Okay, so I've got my box. It kind of has these little uh, corners. It's not going to matter. So I have, I had my husband take these sticks and cut them down. So I had, I measured how far it was here and I cut those down. And then I measured how far it was here and I had him cut those down. And we are going to stain them. We're going to kind of you didn't really need me to do that. You could have cut it. I could, well, I here. could have, but it, you just you just run out there and go do it, and and it's done. There you go. Okay, so one thing about these is on one side there is ruler marking. I'm sure the camera won't pick that up, but there's ruler markings that can come in, that can come in, kind of handy for some things. But for what we're doing, that's going to be the back side. That's going to be the side we glue to the cardboard. Now I've already pre-stained these. Let me show you how I do it. I don't mess with, I don't mess with wood stain. I just use acrylic paint and I have it upside down because I'm almost out and I want it down here at the, at the bottom. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a Clorox wipe. If I can pull one out. In fact, I'm going to get two and we are going to apply the paint to the wood with these wipes. So what it does is the, the moisture of the wipe kind of dilutes the paint and stains it. So has anybody else hopped on and said hello? Okay, so I've got a little bit of paint on there and I'm just gonna take that. I kind of ran a, uh, kind of ran a sanding block over this, smooth off any rough edges and you can see it's putting a really nice stain on my wood piece and a little bit more now I'm I'm doing this without gloves so I'm gonna get I'm gonna end up with paint underneath my fingernails and so I'm probably probably gonna have to do the dishes tonight and uh, soak that out. No comments from the peanut gallery. But if you don't if you don't like getting paint on you, just get some get some latex gloves and and do this with some gloves on. Okay, so all the sides staining this up. You don't have to use brown either. I'm using. This is Apple Barrel Burnt Umber. You could use a lighter brown, you could use black, you could use colors, you could use a red, and it would it would stain it that a light a lighter shade of whatever color you use. Because again, the the moisture in the wipes is uh, kind of diluting the paint. And it causes it to dry really quickly, not like, not like regular wood stain that gets kind of pricey and it takes a while to let it dry and sometimes it smells really bad. So this is my option for staining wood for crafting. I don't know that I would do this on a piece of furniture. Hey, so voila. I have those two done and I'm going to try to clean up my hands a little bit so I don't look so messy. Okay, who else is out there? Pop on, say hello. Say hello. Tell me where you're watching from. Okay, I'm going to move this board and I'm just going to give it a quick little dry. mostly water and a little bit of paint so it's going to dry up pretty quickly hello 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 is anybody out there 
Okay, so I have a question for you. I have noticed some of my followers have not been have not been showing photos of the crafts they're working on. So tell me, are you working on crafts? And tell me what the last craft was that you worked on. Tell me what it was. Tell me what kind of craft it was. Do you do wood crafts? Do you do paper crafts? Do you do painting crafts? Somebody's got to be out there willing to talk to me tonight. So I don't know if you follow our page, maybe you saw we posted a little video. We took we have baby chicks and they're not so baby anymore. Yes, dear, that's a craft. That's a craft. <laughs> hey. It's you. What did what did you do? You uh, soldered it. No, I welded. it. Welded it. Welded it. Well, type of solder. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's a that's a craft I have not learned how to do welding. Neither have I. Apparently, so you you haven't seen it. Well, it doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to work. It works. Hi, Vicky. Welcome. Okay. I hope you think it's a cute idea when I'm done. Anyway, so I have all of my pieces. I have. I'm gonna go three high. And so I've got six of the long ones and I've got six of the short ones. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the short ones. And I'm going to start at the bottom because it's not going to match up exactly. It's going to be taller at the top. So I'm just I'm just gonna hot glue it because I'm doing I'm using wood but I'm using it on cardboard. Push that down so it's flat on the bottom. Now you were very specific to me on how long you wanted those cut. I I did. Sure. Well, what I did is I I wanted this to be the exact measurement, the short one, and then I wanted the top one to overlap the short ones. And I know that's not UPS because UPS has already been here. I think there's a deer or something. There's a critter outside. We live on the farm in the country. So they may have spied a, a critter. Okay, so I've got that there. I'm gonna put one more on top. So this is gonna be taller than my box, but that's okay. You're not if I do this right, you're not going to see the inside of the box. Just kind of butting that up, making sure it's level. And picking off all of those glue gun strings. Do you guys fight with glue gun, glue, hot glue strings? My husband heard, Bill heard on, was it TikTok or Pinterest or someplace, to keep your hot glue sticks from stringing is you put them in the freezer. And if you use them when they're cold, they don't string. I haven't tried that. Has anybody else heard that? Because we haven't tried it yet. I keep my hands off her glue gun sticks yeah, because uh, good. they're hers. Mine are out in the garage, so I don't have a freezer out there. But have you guys tried to, anybody found that to be true? Or do you just deal, somebody also said they um, take the heat gun and kind of light them on fire and that gets rid of them. So I'm just kind of lining it up. Over the top, just lining that up. And I'm just, because this is kind of um, mitered, I'm, I'm just ignoring that because I'm going to 
put the other pieces down right over the top of that. You won't even know that it's mitered. That's just part of the box that I use. You could use any kind of box. And you might need to use more or less of the of the paint sticks. Hi, Nancy. Welcome from Minnesota. You always follow directions. You pop on, you say hello, and you tell us where you're from. Thank you so much. Okay, so I have my ends done. And because it's not the super, let me pull this thing back. It's not the super highest quality wood. There's some differences in it, and that's okay. It's it's meant to look a little shabby chic, a little farmhousey. Okay. So let's see, let's do this side first. So now I'm gonna take my long ones and if I plan this right, this should line up right there and it looks like it did. So it just overlaps those two edges. And you know what I'm gonna do? Because I'm gluing some wood to wood, I'm gonna use a little bit of wood glue just on the wood pieces if I can open this. And then I'm gonna do hot glue. I'm gonna do hot glue onto the cardboard. What did you want me to show? I was gonna have, have you show them how they're overlapping. Okay, well, you can't say that on, on Facebook. Sure you can. No, you can't, okay. So, hot glue, hot glue, hot glue. Line that up, line that up, and I'm going to put it down here so I know it's lined up to the bottom, and I'm going to push that down until that glue sets. So if you can see what I did is I had him cut these long pieces so that they are longer than the box itself and covers up these edge pieces so it goes right up to there and butts up right up to there pretty cool let's put a little more wood glue so are you bill are you proud of me that i'm putting wood glue i am so proud where i have wood okay but i don't think it matters so much where i have cardboard and I am you're using tight bond Would I'm you? using let me see I'll replace the glue stick let me get this down I'll tell you what brand that one is it doesn't look like it's tight bond. Loctite that's Loctite that is Loctite okay. that one is an indoor I believe this is Express Wood Glue, 10 minute clamp time interior. Interior Doesn't, only, yeah. meaning it's not supposed to get wet. I'm yeah. not worried about yeah. that. This is meant to be an indoor. This is meant to be a little yeah. indoor project. It's cardboard on the inside, if so. If you're gonna put something outside, just look at the Loctite 2 or Loctite 3. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Type Bond 2 or Type, type Bond 3. Those are both uh, water resistant and they don't uh, okay. separate from water. Okay. And now, you learn now, something now you know. Inquiring minds. Okay. Is anybody Did inquiring now? I don't know. Is anybody talking? Okay. Haven't tried either one of those. Well. Okay. Last one on this side. And I'm lining that up, pushing it down. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the hot glue. Silly me. Okay, I'm, I am really hoping this turns out cute. I didn't practice it. It's going to look great. Push that down. There we go. How does that look? Would If you didn't know that there was a cardboard box in there, would you think there's a cardboard box in there? I think maybe not. 
Okay, now let's do the back, same thing. A little bit of wood glue. Little bit of hot glue, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave that little opening there where it's got that bevel. I'm not hearing you. Okay, this one's a little bit. This one's a little bit narrower. Okay, I'm gonna push that down. You're making a fine clamp, by the way. Am I? Yes. I probably should have clamp. I will clamp this before because it'll take it'll take a minute for that uh, wood glue yeah. to set. Oh, like you. Yep. Building it. Yep. That's what I'm doing. That way, I don't have to worry about nails and screws and and it's not meant to be. But it's not meant to last. It's not meant to be super, super durable. This is just to be something that you could put together quickly with simple supplies. Nice part is it's going to be about the width of a windowsill. Mm -hmm. so stick them on a windowsill or whatever. It's the width of four <laughs> mason jars. Okay, so pushing that down. So that sets. And let's do one more. And again, my edges are going up higher than the box because I don't want the box to be seen. So it's going to sit down, it's going to sit down below, push that down, how much time do we have, we are, we are doing good, okay, so there I have my box, now I do, I do think I'm going to clamp it, like Jed clamp it, to make those corners stick. But for, for the purposes that we're going to go on, I'm going to go on with <clears throat> the next part of it. So this is big enough for my four jars. We'll get to those jars. Okay. So I've got my wood box. When I put the jars in, you're not going to see that cardboard box. We're going to decorate this up a little bit so this I'm going to call this the front and I'm going to use I'm going to use my stencil and I have I have dried glue yes Nancy and I want to see a picture try it hey secondhand treasures welcome Debbie from Florida awesome how's your weather in Florida Sunshiny. Sunshiny. We went to Florida. What month were we? July. We was went. it July? Okay, that was summer. A few years ago. Okay. Florida oh. seems like it's one of those places that's always warm, but I don't think it is. Isn't that? That's where a lot of people go. Snowbirds go to. Okay, so I'm going to use one of our transfers on this. These are Chalk Couture transfers. This right here is our April Club transfer. It's exclusive to club members and designers, but it's got this adorable little plant theme, and we've used it. Uh, yeah, we've used it over here. We've used it on a couple of things. I'm just going to use the words, and I'm going to chalk them right here on this box. Because it's wood, I'm going to get out my surface wax and a little microfiber cloth. And because it's painted, well, sort of painted wood, stained wood, and it's a little, a little rough, I'm going to just give it a light coat of wax all the way across. That will kind of even out any of the, of the wood grain so that my chalk has a flat surface to adhere to. 
and it will also help when I lift up the transfer that it doesn't stick so hard that it uh, stretches. So I've got a little bit of wax on here. I may even go through because the wax kind of gives it a little bit of a sheen, just slightly. So I may end up waxing the whole box. That might make it just a little bit more water resistant. But the way I have it planned, you shouldn't need it to be too water resistant. Hey, Alana, how are you doing? Sleeping a lot today. I hope you're feeling better. I'm glad you got the opportunity to sleep. Okay, so I've waxed my wood. It is all the time. Oh, hey, Thissa, I just saw your name. Sharon said. I said hi to Sharon. I, oh, yeah, Sharon, yeah. I said, I said hi to Sharon. I said, I think I said hi to everybody. If I miss you, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this out. I'm going to give this just a little bit of a fuzz. Put a little bit of fuzz onto the surface. Our transfers are sticky. This is not the first time I've used it though. So it's kind of, the stickiness has kind of mellowed a little bit, but I'm just gonna put a layer of fuzz maybe just once and i'm going to decide i want it down low ish and i kind of want it off to the side i don't want it centered and i want it i want as much as possible below that line so while you're doing that explain for those who just came on how you made the box while okay you're doing that. how i'm if you if you're just popping on how i made the box it is a cardboard box and then i took some paint stir sticks this is my scrap wood i've got a lot of these hanging around and cut them down to the size of the length of the box and the width of the box and then i stained them i stained them just with acrylic paint and a baby wipe i used that method and then I glued them onto the box. So it kind of looks like a wooden planter, but it's really a cardboard box with paint sticks. Okay, so I'm pushing that down so it's adhered nicely. And I'm going to chalk this in a light green, sage green, because green is kind of for plants, right? You were naughty. Oh no. I'm not surprised you were naughty. I'm sure you took it easy though. I'm sure your body is making you take it easy. Okay, so I've got our chalk paste, chalk in paste form, and I'm just going to put a little bit on my squeegee. And I am going over a groove between two, two of those paint sticks. So I, I may have a little bit of bleeding just because I don't have a solidly flat surface, but I'm okay with that want it to look a little rustic. So I'm just pushing that down through our screen. Our screens, those, where those openings are, they really aren't openings. They are fine mesh silk screen, which allows us to come up with some beautiful designs, something you can't do with an ordinary stencil. I think I've got all of that covered. Now I'm going to put this back in and I'm going to peel and reveal. I'm going to go slow and if I missed any pot, any parts, I can lay it right back down and chalk it again. Here we go. Looks good. Keep going. Keep growing. What do you think? Do you love it? I'm loving it. Okay, so let me get, I just have a dish drying mat from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna just put this down right there. And until I'm ready to clean it, I'm just gonna spray it with water so that paste won't dry. That makes cleaning it easier. And I'm going to get my little dryer and I'm just gonna zap this with a little bit of, a little bit of warm air. Dry that up. Okay, so there's our 
There is our herb garden planter box. What do you think? Okay, not done yet though. Extra, I, you're gonna do extra. I'm gonna do extra. We also have this transfer. It's made to go with our mason jar cutout. And it's meant to go into the center of the mason jar. And it is, these are herbs. So I've got thyme, I've got parsley, I've got rosemary, and I've got oregano. Not parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. And now I can't get that out of my head. But I've used these before. I'm just going to use the words up at the top. And I'm going to chalk them onto, these are bamboo um, plant labels. I got these at... Oh, where did I get them? Home Depot in the garden section. They are made out of bamboo, so I believe that means they will stand up to moisture better than pine or something like that. Although if you could, if you didn't find these, you could take the little smaller paint sticks or even like the wooden uh, tongue depressors, and you could you could chalk the same thing on there. So ooh, I'm, that one's kind of got a little messed up spot. I'm going to get one that looks a little better. And we are going to just chalk the words on these and we'll put them in the pots. Okay. So I'm going to put that up there. I don't think that's blocking. I'm gonna... Okay. So I've got, let's start with time. And these have been used, but I'm still going to fuzz it. And I'm not going to fuzz this. This has a really nice, smooth surface. But I'm going to line it up. I kind of have to be over the top of it. And I'm going to hold it up and make sure it is centered where I want it to be. Push that down. And I'm going to paste this in black velvet. Again, chalk paste, chalk and paste form. It is, hey Cheryl, I didn't see you sneak in, did I? Okay, chalk and paste form, non toxic, all natural ingredients, water soluble. So I'm going to just chalk over those letters and peel that off. Look at that. My time. Got time. I'm going to set that aside to dry and I'm going to get, let's do parsley. Parsley has not been used, so give it a little extra fuzzing. Okay, same thing. I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to make sure there's, I can kind of see through it, so I'm just making sure it is even on the stick. Good. Okay, same thing. I'm using a half of a mini squeegee to do this. And I'm just going over those letters. Now, because this is water soluble, parsley, parsley. Because this is water soluble, there is a possibility that these might get wet. So probably what I will do is when these are all dry, I will coat it over with either some Mod Podge or a clear spray paint. Okay, rosemary. A clear spray paint just to put up a barrier between any water that might get on these when I go to water my plants. Okay. Rosemary. Black velvet paste. Scrape off the excess. Lift it up. Ooh, that kind of smeared. But that's okay. Oh, I'm overhead. Okay. My M and my A kind of smeared. That's okay. I can either redo it on a different one or and just live with that. Okay. I think it's because there was probably a little more of a groove in that in that uh, stick. Okay, and oregano. 
lined up. Push that down. Here we go to paste. And there's oregano. Okay, so I have all my spices. Let me put this away. Let me put the lid on. Let me dry these. Don't those look cute? Of course, if you do spices other than parsley, thyme, rosemary, and oregano, you're probably going to have to do these with a sharpie because we don't have we don't have transfers for all of those. But it's a cute idea, right? And these are probably the most popular spices. Okay, so let me show you now what to do with, well, first of all, I don't, I prefer these did not dry, so I'm going to spray those down. Okay, now I have, I'm going to put these in mason jars. Now, normally when you do plants, you have holes in the bottom for drainage, but a glass jar, you're not going to have that. So here's the key. You need to get some pebble, and I got these... I actually got these pebbles. Bill's going to shoot me. I bought pebbles at the dollar, at the dollar Tree. He's going to say, you have a whole yard. You have a whole driveway full of gravel and you go buy. But I wanted them to look nice. So I got this big bag of pebbles at the Dollar Tree. And so I've got maybe an inch or so of pebbles in here. And then I'm going to take some sand. And I'm going to pour some sand over that and kind of shake it in. So this way, when you put the soil on top of it and there's too much and there's excess water, the excess water is going to go down into these rocks and pebbles. And so your plant is not going to be sitting and soaking in water. And then when it's ready, it will pull some of that moisture back up. So that's what you do. Pebbles and sand. And then... This is my oregano. So I just bought a little oregano plant. And I'm going to I'm going to put it in this so I don't get dirt all over my work table. So I'm going to take this oregano plant and I'm going to pull it out. And you can see it's just about the same size. So I'm going to take a little bit off the bottom. And I'm going to kind of squeeze it and I'm just going to push it down in that jar. There we go. Okay. So push it down so there's a little bit of space to water it. And now I have my oregano. And I've already pre planted. So oregano. And rosemary. And you can see those glass, those lids just kind of come up to the top. And then I've got thyme. Now, if you wanted to, you could use the plant labels that come with them. And then I have parsley. No, uh, if you're gonna make a craft out of it, you get you it. make your own. Okay. So I have my four spices. Look at that. Is that not cute? Okay, and then let's see, here's my parsley. So I'm gonna stick that in. This is my thyme. What thyme do you have? Get it? Get it? Here's my rosemary. And my oregano. And there I have, I have my project. What do you think? Do we like it? I like it. You can put this on your countertop. You can put this in your windowsill. You can snip off the herbs as you use them and they'll continue to keep growing. So you kind of want to get it to where there's some sunlight. Don't overwater it, but cute little display of spices. Now, I'm going to put this to the side. I have a couple of minutes. I'm going to show you how we clean up our transfers because that's an important part. They are reusable, 
but they last a lot longer if you clean them up really well. And I'm gonna just kind of set these to the side for right now. Okay. So I'm gonna take my water. I'm going to just spray that. I didn't use that, so I'm not really worried about that. I'm gonna take a, this is a Swedish dishcloth, which is like a reusable paper towel. If you only had a paper towel, that would work fine too. This is optional, but I have found this helps a lot. So I'm going to take off just that top layer of paste. And if I've used a paper towel, I can toss it. If I've used this, I can rinse it out, clean it again. Next, I'm gonna take my board eraser. This is like a magic eraser, but there's no chemicals in it. And this is going to pull all of that paste off of that transfer, except if something's stained. You can kind of see the colors I used here have kind of stained it, but I'm getting that paste out of the screen. So front and back, paste out of the screen. And I'm gonna let that air dry. When it's dry, I'm going to put it back on its backer sheet, which I shoved somewhere. Here it is. I'm gonna put it back on its backer sheet when it's dry and sticky and back in its plastic and store it away till I'm ready to use it again. The company guarantees you can use these eight, 10, 12 times, but I know personally that you can use them even more than that if you take good care of them. So I'm gonna clean these up later. I'm not gonna make you watch that, but I'll do it the exact same way. Okay. So again, this was our club transfer. Keep going, keep growing. If you're interested in this, you would have to join club before Saturday night, because then it's going away. May 1st comes out a new transfer. So if you want more information about club, it's our monthly DIY subscription program. You can type the word club in the comments and my bot will send you a link to more information about the club or you're welcome to just ask and I will, I will get in touch with you. Um, if you're interested in the herb words, that's a different transfer that is available for purchase. You can type the word herb, H-E-R-B in the comments and my bot will send you a link to that um, to that site and you can take a look at that. So anyway, again, April Club closes April 30th and May starts May 1st. So if you like this one, the keep growing, keep, gro keep going, keep growing with the plants, you wanna get in on that before Saturday night. Okay, so thank you so much for hanging out with me till the very end, a lot of you. And thanks for commenting. I hope you will like and follow our page and give us some hearts and watch us again. Follow us and because we go live quite often. So follow our page, find out when we go live and follow us for some other fun crafts. And we want to thank Crafter on the Clock for allowing us to host this little segment. And I hope you enjoy the next presenter on Craftwood Week. So I'm going to kind of pose here and I'm going to let you guys go. So thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Happy crafting.